Good day, students. So welcome to part three of the Integrated Algebra Regions um, exam. Uh, this is for June 2013. We're going to be going over questions uh, 16 through 20 in this installment, okay? All right, let's take a look at question number 16. Uh, it says, if R x minus S T equals R, which expression represents x? Okay, so this is basically solving um, an equation using the properties of algebra, okay, using the tools of algebra. So we have um, uh, Rx minus uh, st, st equals R. Okay, so we want to uh, get the representation of x by getting x by itself, okay? If we get x isolated by itself on one side of the equation, then uh, that will be uh, what the, the term on the right, the, the um, expression on the right would be what the value of x is, okay? So let's go ahead and do that. So first of all, we're going to get rid of s t from the right side and then finally get rid of r and we'll be left with x and then whatever the value is on the right side of the expression will be the value of x okay so let's start out by uh so adding st to both sides so you do the opposite add st add st so you're going to have r x equals r plus st all right so to finally uh isolate x we're going to divide by both sides by r because rx basically means r times x the relationship between r and x is multiplicative so to uh, break that relationship what we're going to do is uh, basically divide both sides by r okay so divide this by r <coughs> and then divide this entire expression by r this divides out so we'll have x equals r plus st over r Okay, so our answer is option number one. All right, so there you have it. All right, now well, let's uh, shift our attention to question number 17. It says, what is the solution of the equation x plus 2 over 2 equals 4 over x? So we'll use the properties of equality here again to solve this. So we have x plus 2 uh, over 2 equals 4 over x. Now what we're going to do is cross, cross multiply, all right? Multiply this denominator by the numerator on the left and then the denominator by the numerator on the right, okay? So when you cross multiply, you have x times x plus two equals eight, okay? Now distribute the left side, we'll have x squared plus two x equals eight. Now this is a quadratic equation because we have a square here. So in order to start solving, we have to put the quadratic equation uh, in standard form, okay? So to do that, we just basically set it equal to zero. So subtract eight from both sides. So what we'll be left with is x squared plus two x minus eight equals zero, all right? So I'm gonna factor this uh, using the x gang. So uh, let's go ahead and do that. So what I'm going to do is make a little x here. AC goes on the top and b goes on the bottom. As you can see here, a is one, b is two, c is negative eight. So ac is negative eight and b is two. All right, so what's the number is multiplied to give you negative eight and add to give you two, four, and two. Uh, since the product is negative and the sum is positive, the small number has to be negative, okay? So we have x squared plus four x minus two x minus eight equals zero. Break it down the center and factor by grouping. So from the first two, I'll factor out an x. I have x is four. And from these two, I'll factor out negative two, I'll be left with x is four equals zero, all right? Now we're gonna factor again, x plus four is common on both sides, so we'll factor out x plus four, and we're gonna be left with x minus two equals zero, okay? Now some people want to look at this answer and say, oh wait, the answer is negative two and positive four, option four, that's incorrect, okay? You have to use the zero product property to finish this off. To do that, you just basically set each factor to zero and you solve. Because if you have the product of two numbers is zero, one of the two have to be zero, okay? So to solve this for x, you subtract four from both sides. And you have x equals negative four, that goes your first answer. And then this way, you add two to both sides, you have x equals two, all right? So uh, the solution of the equation is two and negative four, option number two, all right? All right, so let's look, take a look at question 18. It says, um, which type of function is graphed below? So this requires you to know the um, appearance of your different uh, functions, how the functions, how the parent graphs look like, okay? 
So um, let's do a real quick review that linear function is just a straight line. Okay, straight line with no curves. Is this a straight line? Absolutely not. So this graph is not a linear function. Quadratic has a square in it. It's a U uh, of, of, or a parabola either facing up or a parabola facing downwards. Okay, so it could be that or this or this. But this one is neither uh, a parabola facing up nor down. It's just a curve. Exponential. Hmm. Let's see. I don't. Let's act as though we don't know what it is, even though this is the answer. Do you remember what the absolute value function looks like? Absolute value function is like a V, okay? It's either a V facing up or a V facing down if A is negative, okay? Is this a V? Nope. So we know the answer has to be exponential. Exponential function starts with a slow growth rate and all of a sudden just picks up exponentially. That's how, uh, that's why um, rapid growth rates are expressed as being exponential. So remember this function that looks like this is your exponential function, all right? You can also um, plug sample functions into your calculator and see uh, which one generates a curve like this. If you plug in e to the x in your calculator, for example, you're going to get a curve that looks like this. All right. So there you have it. All right. So in this one, uh, number 19, it says, what is the slope of a line represented by the equation 4x plus 3y equals 12? Now, there are two ways, two methods for solving, uh, to, for finding the slope of an equation like this, okay? Um, M, the slope is equal to B in the Y equals MX plus B form. This is known as the uh, slope intercept form. Also, M equals negative A over B in the AX plus BY equals C form, or known as the standard form. Okay, this is standard, and this is slope intercept. So let's go ahead and use both methods to uh, find the slope. Method one is a standard form. The reason why I'm using the standard form here is because the equation is provided to us in standard form. So it's much quicker to use method one, okay? So standard form. So we have 4x plus 3y equals 12. So this is a, b, C, okay, so remember the slope for the standard form of the equation of a line is negative A over B. So in this case, it's going to be negative 4 over 3. So that goes your final answer, uh, number 4, okay? Now let's try another method. Method 2 is uh, using the slope-intercept form, slope-intercept. All right, so using the slope-intercept form, um, this is longer because we have to transform this graph, which is in standard form, into slope intercept form and then read up what the slope is, okay? So let's do that. We have 4x plus 3y equals 12. Now to convert this to a uh, slope intercept form, we need to get y isolated, okay? So to do that, we first of all get rid of 4x by subtracting 4x from both sides. And then that yields 3y equals 12 minus 4x. And then to finish this up, we can divide every single term by 3, divide by 3, divide by 3, divide by 3. Write this in slope intercept form. We have y equals negative 4 over 3x. 12 over 3 is 4 plus 4. Okay? So our slope is m, the coefficient of x. So we can clearly see in this second method that our slope is negative 4 over 3, which is m. All right, so uh, that goes our answer. You can clearly see we're confident now that our answer is, in fact, number four. Okay, let's take a look at number 20. Is assessing our understanding of how to graph uh, linear inequalities. So um, the nice thing about this problem is all the options are provided for us in, in a slope-intercept form, okay? So all we need is we need to find the slope on the y-intercept of this line and the direction of the shade. That will give us the equation that we, we need, okay? So remember that if you have less than, you shade down, and it's going to be broken. When I say shade down, you shade underneath the line. If you have less than or equal to, you shade down, and guess what? The line is going to be solid, solid line, broken line. Now, if you look at this graph, it's obvious that it's less than because you're shading underneath the roof, okay? So it's going to be of the form y is less than or equal to mx plus b. So the question is, what is m and what is b? m is a slope, right? It's rise of a run. So what is the rise and the run in this, in this graph? We just pick two nice points that fall on the 
line and then we we uh, try to get from one point to the other going from left to right okay so let's pick a point here this point and that point how do you get there you rise one and run one so our rise is one our run is one so our slope is one d is the y-intercept where does the graph intersect the y-axis the intersect the y-axis at negative one so d is negative one all right so our equation substituting these two values into this uh um, linear inequality, general form of a linear inequality, we have y is less than or equal to m, which is 1, x plus d, d is negative 1 minus 1, all right? So it simplifies into y is less than or equal to x minus 1. And the answer is option number 4, all right? So there you have it. Thanks so much for taking the time to watch this presentation. Feel free to subscribe to my channel by clicking up here. And uh, please post a comment to let me know what you think about this presentation or any questions or clarifications you would like. I would appreciate a comment. And uh, do visit MagdaServe.com to get a collection of more cool math videos such as this. Thanks again for watching and have a wonderful day.